Well, last week we promised to show everybody Karen's building fronts. Yes, those are fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are designed, they, they can sit on a table or they can hang on a wall. Uh, last week we were looking at the, the fronts for the Mall Railroad. Right, those were fun to make too. It's the same, it's a very similar idea. Exactly. But different because these have to be just incredibly thin. Um, so most of them are less than half an inch. Right, they have to be in order to accommodate the small clearances here. Everything's super tight. Uh, notice how close the train comes to the buildings. Ooh, yes. So if they hung out more than half an inch, the, well, there'd be a, a crash, wouldn't Oh, <laughs> dear, just watch coming off that last step. But then I laid awake all night trying to come up with ideas to do these buildings. Well, and there's some really innovative ideas, like your stained glass idea. Exactly. I mean, I laid awake all night trying to figure <laughs> this one out. We'll come back to that, but because uh, a lot of these buildings need to have stained glass windows, and you figured out a way to do that. I did. That, that pays staying up all night and worrying about it, right? <laughs> Losing a bit of sleep yeah. over stained glass. But most of these buildings, whether it's for the railroad or for the building fronts, are just cut out of paper. Right. So you printed the brick on the computer paper. Right, I just look online for any kind of brick, like I say brick sample, and it gives you the head-on square shot of any kind of brick you want. And then mounting it to, in this case, just a corrugated cardboard. Right, I didn't throw that one away because I can use that. And sometimes foam core or swathmore board. This was the first building of inspiration, one of my favorites, the Soda Fountain in Spring City. Spring City is well, it's one of our favorite places. Oh, I lived there for four years, and I just <laughs> loved it. Well, we, we had a house there. That was a neat house. And uh, it's such an amazing and beautiful community. Uh, people come from all over the place just to see it. Most of the structures are from uh, the 1850s to about 1900. Right. And so, oh my God, this was our house. Yes, there it is. <laughs> there it is. And... Um, Right next door to it, right over there, was this building. Now, it was an art gallery some years ago, but then they turned it into the soda fountain. Right. So there's the building right there. That's the inspiration for this building front. Right. So here's the final version. Right, and I added my own touches to it. Like, I would, if I owned it, what it would look like. And I frankly like this better. Yes, it's an idea, but <laughs> I, I would have kept it the soda fountain. But there's some things that you integrated that I really like more. So I used foam core to make this, and I used a second layer here to create this side piece or a pillar to create depth. Now, a lot of it seems to be made out of wood, just painted wood. It is. All of the strips and the doors and such are made out of wood. Just a little strip wood that you buy at the craft store. So I guess everything on the original building that was painted wood is still painted wood. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, even the doors here. Right, and I added double doors. I wanted to make it a bigger entrance. And then I love all the little bent pieces of wire and metal. Right. That, that adds so much to it. The door handles and that's just bent craft wire. All of these were built to a forced perspective. You check the angle of everything here. It'd be like if you drew a picture but tried to turn it into 3D. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting uh, thing, forced perspective. Right, and I about went crazy trying to figure it out. But working on it, I changed a few things because I would eye it and think, oh, that's not going to work. Now, this was really popular in 19th century European art, only they called it trompe. Trompe. Huh. I love digging out a $40 word when, yes. it, when a 49-cent word will do the that's job. That's right. Entrance. Anyway, trompe. <laughs> <laughs> So the interior is definitely a forced perspective. And what I did was just print off wallpaper, again, off the internet to use on the back with a piece of cardboard. And the furniture is, again, craft wire. And I took little circles from the craft store, little wooden circles, cut them in half for the tables and just used colored paper for the tablecloths, beads for the bosses, and little uh, flowers that I had from another project. Now, I love the fact that these interiors have lights in them. I goofed on that one. I got the wrong lights and I ended up grabbing the 4th of July section and, uh, whoops. Well, red, white, and blue, it's perfect. It on, is. <laughs> on the model railroad, we because those have to be so flat, we use these things. Right. And if you uh, want to find out more about that, watch last week's uh, movie. Here's a link to that. But uh, if you need to do super, super flat, you can uh, use these electroluminescent panels and then colored gels 
and just print pictures straight off the internet. Right, just a nice picture of an interior that you like. And there it is. It lights up and it looks like an interior and it's just paper thin. Right. So it can mount in a narrow section. But here's the downside. Oh. Those electroluminescent panels run on 90 volts. Oof. And the really large ones, this one's eight and a half by 11, and it draws quite a bit of power. Oh dear. And you can't run that off batteries. So in this case, the 90 volts is being created by this little black box right over here called an inverter. And that's reasonably good sized. But the bigger problem is that runs on a 12 volt power source, which in this case is a 10 amp power supply. Oh my goodness. So for the model railroad, this was no problem uh, because we have these power supplies and then these power supplies all plug directly into uh, the 110 line current right here. Um, so we already had this, this 12 volts on the railroad, so that wasn't a problem. But for a wall hanging, it needs to run on batteries. Right, and this is what I wanted it to run on, was just a battery, so I could move it around when I want to. So we thought, well, we can use these, but that's about the biggest electroluminescent panel you can run on batteries. Right. That's about four inches square. Hmm. So we can't do the exact same thing. No. So I use these, I guess they're called fairy lights, or little tiny light C lights. Yeah, you can, we get them at Modern Display. Oh yeah, Kmart, Walmart, Kmart, did I say Kmart, Walmart? <laughs> Walmart, yeah, that kind of dates it. Yes. But they run on batteries, they'll run forever and ever on three uh, AAAs. Right. And uh, you can cut them down to length, and, and they're very affordable. Right. And they're really bright. Exactly, and I've even used the parts that I've cut off, and got a microscope out, and got the insulation off, and reused those pieces too. <laughs> And as you pointed out, they're available in, in colors, red, yes. white, and blue in Ugh. this case. Yeah. But if you want to make them colors, in this case, this one can be changed. So there it is, the very festive red, white, and blue soda fountain. Yes, I managed to put some white exterior lights on and then put a pony bead over those to make a, a light shade, if you will. But those are all just fairy lights. They are, that's all it is. <laughs> And it works great uh, because these rooms actually have a little bit of depth. There's an actual interior there, so you can get away with putting these little teeny fairy lights inside the building. Yes. So this is the finished version, including my favorite sign of all time. <laughs> I love that sign. I do too. We should buy it for us. That, we should put that up at Garage Mahal. Exactly. Perfect. Anyway, I love the, the various beads and the lighting and the little force perspective tables and the force perspective sidewalk. It really, it's really cool. It's fun. So what I'm trying to do now is to recreate this beautiful old store that used to be in Moroni, Utah. It was the old Moroni co-op building. And uh, I'm recreating this store using a force perspective. And so far I'm this far on the, the facade of the building. I have made the doors and the windows. I just use the paper from a printer. I find like yellow brick on the internet panels, print those off to make the brick facade. And the trim pieces are just balsa wood and other trim wood that I buy at the hobby store. So this was a, it was been the version, I guess, of Walmart back in its day. It was built in 1896, but this was one of the old co-op stores that handled about everything. The store was there when I was a child growing up. Unfortunately, it burned down in 1970. Like so many of these old buildings, I'd like to have it back again the way I remember it and certain elements of it, so I'm recreating it. Well, that's really looking like it. It is, especially that stained glass window. I remember that window. That is a really interesting uh, feature. There's a lot of stained glass in these old buildings. There is. And uh, I've always wanted to be able to recreate these stained glass, and I've never been able to figure out a proper way to do it did it on one building once and it turned out okay, but this is so much better. But uh, here's our house. Right. And look at it, it had several stained glass windows just in our house. Isn't that beautiful? But that was the Victorian era for you. They put a lot of stained glass in there. 
So just like the brick, you can find all kinds of pictures of stained glass on the internet. I just try to find one that's as colorful and as straight on as possible. Well, and there's tons of them. Oh, exactly. Because people who do stained glass want to show off their stained glass, and they always do it backlit, and they uh, do it straight on like this. Right. Isn't it beautiful? So uh, now, if you're really good at software, you can create your own. Sure. In like a Photoshop. But exactly. It's, it's simpler if you can just find one that's going to suit your needs to just grab one off the internet. Right. So here is one of the stained glass windows I wanted to put in my storefront. I copied it off the internet and sized it down to the proper size. There I use a piece of shipping tape, just a, just maybe about a two, three inch piece. Fast enough, I was going to tape it over the top and just yank it off really quick. And it brings the print with it and it's shiny like a glass window, at least on one side, but the light comes through. Then I just use the scissors and cut it to the shape and size that I want. Now, I imagine you could even make it clearer. I mean, these come in a little bit frosty, which I think looks just fine. Right, but I did find that by using some colorless nail polish on the rough side, so kind of it makes it really clear. So head. either way, because yes. I, I kind of like, because a lot of these windows are made of a frosty glass. Right, but the idea is so that the light shines through it. But there it is. I'd, I'd be tempted to just use it like that. But I think on the store you used the, the clear. I did because you could see the little fibers from the paper and it didn't look very good with the light behind it. So you just used uh, nail polish, clear nail polish. Clear nail polish. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And Let it dry really well and then cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> so look how the light shines right through it with the clear nail polish on the back. It really does look just exactly like stained glass. Right, and you can, on the dark lines, if you're talented and steady of hand, uh, color in the lines. Now, I noticed on this one you built a frame for it? I did. I used that really microscopic thin strip wood, and I actually built a little frame for it. Well, it sure looks great. It, it adds such a wonderful feature to the front of the store. It does. It's kind of like the jewel mounted in the middle of the building. Oh, it's something I so remember. So I found an interior online again that was as close as I remember to that store and it had these wooden floors and luckily there was like a, a sunspot on the floor so I actually incorporated the sun shining through that stained glass window onto the floor as I remembered it when I was a kid and would go in that store. Well between the force perspective and just the perspective of the print that really works well. It looks just like I remember that store. It's got real depth to it. And then the upstairs. Yes, I. we didn't ever know what the upstairs was used for, whether it was room or it was an apartment up there that the owner had. I just, I invented my own upstairs, including a Christmas tree. Well, that's perfect. I love the wallpaper. Yes. And uh, then you made some curtains. And right, just out of ribbon again, uh, lace and ribbon. And here again, it seems that you try to set and change that out and try to right. different set and experimentation. Exactly. I'll put something in there and, oh, I don't like that. So then I'll change it out for something different. But uh, there it is coming together. And look how neat the stained glass looks with the, the fairy lights inside. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, man. That's, that's when the magic great. happens. So this building actually had about three buildings attached to it because it was like almost like what we call a strip mall today. And it was a bank at one time, so I added that building on next. That looks really neat. I wonder if it was added on or was always there. I'm not sure. I think it probably was added on, but I remember all three buildings being there. Well, I'm glad you decided to build it with the little additions off to the side. There's actually uh, like three different buildings or two different buildings. Right, right. This is the first of those and then another one attaches to this one. Right, all part of that cooperative. And there it is. Right. <laughs> I was never sure what the furthest to the right was, but uh, I just, I remember the green shades that were always drawn. When I saw the store, those two last buildings weren't in use. And then you took it all the way back to the 1900s when yes. the street was dirt and it had the hitching rails. Exactly, out exactly like it's in the picture when it would have been a brand new store. So this is my next building front, and this store still currently stands in the town of Moroni, Utah. It's on the historic register. That is a really neat building. It was. At the time when I was a kid, it was just an old building, but I always wondered what it would be like all fixed up. Well, you fixed it up. Well, another lady actually <laughs> bought that store when the older lady that owned it passed away, and she turned it into a, something of a fairy tale store. It was called The Next Chapter. 
I decided to embellish on that a bit. Just a bit. I, it's got, again, stained glass. Oh, I know. I'd ne that place had an upstairs, and I'd never seen lights on in it until this lady bought it. And she t turned the upstairs into an apartment. I, I about flipped. There was lights on up there and stained glass. I'm like, what? That just looks so neat. Yes. And then uh, there it is with the building interior. Exactly. I decided to make it as Delina's as the candy store where we bought penny candy, including the penny candy section in her cash register and her counter. Honestly, she must have worked in that store for years because she walked to and from her home down to that store. Oh, she was a lady in her mid-70s when I was just a kid. And she always was in that store. That is really neat. And I love the, the forced perspective again. Yes. And the, the interior of the apartment. Yes. It's just all of this has real depth and, uh, and a real story to it. Yes, it does. It actually has a real story to it. And this is another building from my hometown, one I just barely remember, but it uh, was a movie theater. That is really neat. It's of that era. It is. It, I remember when it kind of functioned. I guess it went in and out of business quite a bit during its lifetime there. Well, these small towns all had a little small theater, and yeah, they would be in business and then out of business. Right, and I just remember going down. I can remember my new red Ked shoes and going down with some family member to see a movie or two. Now, I noticed you've got your favorite movie of all time, yeah. The Long, Long Trailer. Mostly because it's from the era my mom and dad would have been dating, and I know they used to go here. And the tickets. I love the way you did the ticket window. Yes, they're very tiny, just little small strips of paper, but I just printed them off the computer, too. And some little teeny money. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Got to have a money box. Now, where we couldn't use electroluminescent panels on your... Uh, your wall hangings just because of the power issue this seemed to be a place where maybe one of those el panels would work and that would be to light up the screen right i left the back of the movie theater open where the screen is so it's the paper so the light filters through but it's sort of like a big stanhope so there it is yeah you can see that it's dark in the theater but the light comes through the movie screen and that really looks like a movie playing on the screen it really that. does and it's just one of those really small el panels that will run on three AAA batteries right and i love your spiral neon lights right but i can actually do neon so i actually use craft wire the thing i remember most about this old theater was those spiral fluorescent lights under the marquee and that was a thing that some of the old theaters did. This was the Rialto in Salt Lake. And look at, there it is. Yes, that's the exact concept right there. I remember that. I, I love these old marquees that extended out over the sidewalk, and sometimes they would do this. They right. They would put neon under the marquee to light up the sidewalk area. And you've done the same thing. Well, as a little kid, that just totally fascinated me. I remember standing there getting our ticket and my new red shoes, but I remember those fluorescent lights and they were kind of a pinkish red. So to light the whole thing up, I used red fairy lights. My hope was is the lights would reflect off the aluminum red wire and make it look like they were lit up. Well, and it really does. Look at that. Yes, it's pretty close. <laughs> it actually looks like the neon is glowing underneath here. And then if you're sort of more above it and distant away from it, really looks right. Oh, yes. That really looks like one of those marquees with the red fluorescent, not fluorescent, but neon lights. Neon. Uh, <laughs> underneath it. Yeah. The thing I remember most about this theater, too, was the sidewalk was always in bad repair right through there. So I wanted to recreate that. And I noticed you used some weathering and some dirt. Right, it wasn't perfect. It's a small town and maintenance wasn't the best. And then weeds. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> you gotta have weeds growing up through your sidewalk. That right? happens. Yeah, that happens. So there it is, the front of the building. Complete right. Complete with dirt and weeds. <laughs> yes. So while I was doing it, I decided to do some interior lights and marquee lights in a white color. And for the marquee, I just used pony beads and bead caps to create a little bit of a shield for the lights. 
So naturally, a movie theater requires a lot of power, so I decided I better connect some breaker boxes. You know, uh, Al was known for his trees, and I think you're best known for your breaker boxes. Everything has to have a breaker box and a meter. <laughs> Look at that. That's just uh, the the meter with the glass cover over the meter. Your your power services to buildings are just, just perfect. It almost works. <laughs> Well, this is my tribute to this old theater because it's not there. It's been torn down for years. But as far as I can remember, this is what I remember. all of my building fronts lined up right now on my curio cabinet uh, I might build more so I'll have them sitting here on this curio they could just as easily hang on a wall yeah they're all battery operated right and they don't weigh much of anything being nope. made out of paper and balsa wood right and a couple of batteries so they don't require any power going to them they can just uh, they can just hang on the wall or sit on the table right Well, there they are, all yes. finished. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> well, if you're not a subscriber, you can become a subscriber to the channel by clicking on the blue button. Right there. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we hope you watched last week's movie, too. And we will see you here on Tuesday with some other fun.